Hello, everybody. Welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. And if you are looking for scriptural insight into some of the more complex issues facing this world and our nation these days, you have come to the right place. This program is set forth to give you biblical perspective on life. And we're joined by a group of local ministers who have been researching the Word of God for answers to your written inquiries about life. I'd like you to meet them. They are Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship in Lima, Pastor Kelly Waltz of uh, the Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church. We also have one of two lead pastors from the Cornerstone Church in Lima. That's Pastor Janet Wind. And rounding off our panel today is Pastor Michael Lyons, and he is Senior Pastor of In Faith Ministries, also here in Lima. Ladies and gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us. Those Thank big you. smiles, appreciate Thank you. you. <laughs> Listen, I thought a good lead question might be is the pandemic is, is, is marching on. There, there are some indications that we're on the right side of it now that perhaps uh, the cases that are, since the cases are going down, the deaths are going down, that maybe we're finally putting this thing behind us. Maybe we really beat it. But nonetheless, there's the feeling of some out there that it's all a part of the end times. Mm -hmm. Some people go so far as to say that the mark of the beast, the 666 is written all over the vaccine as well. And I don't mean this to, to be light about it at all. I mean, if you have different opinions, that's wonderful. <laughs> we need to hear them all. What, where, where do you all fall down on, on this? And, and Perhaps we'll start with you, Pastor Lyons, because you and I were talking about that. <laughs> As to whether or not that'd be a good lead question. So what do you think? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, I, when it comes down to really trying to uh, evaluate the, the end times and, and when the Lord will come, I... You know, I, I think it's important to pay attention to prophecies and, and to have a good, solid understanding or at least have some insight uh, on it. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I tend to lean towards the focus of just be ready. Uh, I, I focus more on, uh, you know, scriptures. I think about scriptures as the passage of the uh, of the ten, ten virgins yes. and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, not having the five being foolish, not having yeah. the oil trend. Uh, the truth of the matter is that if you believe that the Lord is coming, uh, if you're ready, then it's more, I think you've, you find more value in making sure that you're ready than wondering when mm -hmm. he's coming. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of, 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 of if, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's when and you want to be ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I kind of lean that way with my focus. But I will say this, uh, there's a scripture uh, Matthew 24, verse 36, and I'm going to read it here. It says, but uh, not, not, I tell you what, I won't even read that one. I'll read Matthew 24, 14. Okay. Uh, and, and this scripture says, and this gospel of the kingdom mm -hmm. shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Yeah. And, and I personally believe that we've got a lot more preaching to do. Uh, that gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, there's people who don't even know the gospel That's of the true. kingdom yeah. uh, that are believers here in, in this nation. So I, I think we got a little bit more work to do uh, according to that scripture. So I'll, I'll pin it with that one. That's excellent. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> well, Pastor I, Walsh, go ahead. Uh, scripture tells us that we're not to know. And if you look at what Jesus shared with his disciples, what were they called to do? Go into the world and make disciples. What are we called to do? Sit here and look at all the signs and then debate what we think is going to happen. Or like it's been stated, are we supposed to share the good news? What's going to be a better investment of our time? Mm -hmm. What did Jesus do when he was here? What did his disciples do? What are we supposed to be doing? Oh, very good. Very good. Now, you know, there, there's a do and a don't that Christ talked about in terms of the end times. Mm -hmm. One, he said, don't set dates. Mm -hmm. But another one, the do, he said, do look for the signs. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, they're going to give us some kind of a clue, I, I guess. I think the other what thing to remember is that the signs he's talking about, we can talk about pandemics, we can talk about famine, we can talk about wars and rumors of wars. I mean, pandemics was one of 
many others, but it's the frequency mm -hmm. and yeah. the yeah. severity, just like he used the woman with the labor pains. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. my wife had six kids. I know that it starts <laughs> out with an occasional yeah. uh, contraction, right? Sure. Yeah. And they get bigger and more frequent until yes. the baby comes. Yeah. Very well put. Go right yeah. ahead. And only, uh, as Jesus said, only the Father knows the day. Even mm -hmm. Jesus himself didn't know the day or the hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we just need to be passionately pursuing him, pursuing mm -hmm. his will, establishing his kingdom on the earth, that his will will be done. Uh, and that's what we should be about. Be about mm -hmm. our Father's business just like yeah. Jesus yeah. was. So. And we're discussing all this with such calmness. I, I, what, do you, what, do you, what are your members feeling? What are they saying to you? Do, are they up in an uproar? Are they nervous? Or yeah. how, how, what are they saying? I, I pray that those who have been under the teaching of InFaith Ministries aren't, <laughs> <laughs> aren't in an uproar. Um, and, and, and I don't think any believer should be. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you truly uh, know the Lord and you've established yourself in Him, you know, it's just like, Death, death has no sting. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, prayerfully, you know, you are, you're praying that God, you know, give my children, give my loved ones, give the people who right. we shared this gospel with a chance to come to the truth uh, of, and the revelation of who you are, mm -hmm. uh, that they will acknowledge you as the Lord and Savior. You know, and, and so, no, there should be no anxiousness in our lives yeah. uh, because we already are established in Christ. So. And if they're is go ahead anxious members then that's an opportunity for you to help them grow a little bit more in their walk with the lord yeah, yeah. to get them to a point because that anxiousness that fear could be holding them back and they're missing out and on an opportunity that god is made ready for them to share the good news, but they can't get beyond their fear. Yeah. And they're so focused on that, that they may be missing opportunities that God's placing in their path. Excellent. And God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have to, we, it, it's, it's time for the believer to rise up and live the word, not just learn the word, not That's just, right. you know, sit under, a, under teaching, but we're walking it out. We're living it. We're supposed to be demonstrations of the living gospel and, and one other thing he said, when you see all these things happening, he didn't say to fear. Right. He said, look yes. up because you know your the redemption, redemption is, drawing is drawing nigh. Yes. So he so wants us to be happy. Yes, yes. yes. At no time does God want us to be fearful. Isn't, right. that, isn't that wonderful? That, right. that, that, that's a wonderful thing yeah, right there. Absolutely. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that mm -hmm. tell us fear not, fear right. not, fear yeah. not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, let's move on to something else then. I think, you know, here's something that people struggle with. And we've been, we've been getting questions about this. And I think I'll tie a couple of questions together. Uh, forgiveness, that issue of forgiveness. Mm. <laughs> um, and it says here, forgiveness is a struggle for me. This is one of our uh, viewers. Yeah. Especially forgiving myself. Mm. Wow. That's a heavy burden. Yeah. Uh, I am quick to forgive, but slow to forget. And I guess they're talking about others at, at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, let's link this also with another one with a, a parent saying they have an estranged relationship with their two oldest children and have not talked with them in many years. That's, wow. that's the way it's phrased here. Yeah. I want to restore those years that I have lost with them, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, let, let's start with the first part, uh, the, just the struggle with forgiveness period. Uh, um, struggling with uh, forgiving yourself, but not being able to forget when other people transgress you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you minister to a person like that? Well, you know, forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you're waiting for the feeling of forgiveness, you'll probably wait till you die. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and Jesus said, forgive because I've forgiven you. Now, is that easy? No, right. but you know, you can as an act of your will choose all right, I will forgive. I don't feel like forgiving. And trust me, I think all of us at this table have had <laughs> that opportunity, sure. you know, and, and, uh, and I remember one major incident in my young adult life where, oh, I'm telling you, I mean, I had to, with the, every ounce of my will forgive, I am making a quality decision to forgive this person. And that's it, okay? And um, so, of course, 
almost immediately look, the thoughts would come. Look what he did. Look, look, look at how it humiliated you and so forth. And I had enough knowledge at that point to say, no, Satan, I am not going to give in to your thoughts. I have made the decision. Ha, 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 you know. And, but see, what happens is he'll remind you, you know. And that, so he leaves you alone for a while at a more opportune time. I think that's what they said about Jesus and his temptation. The devil left him and then came back at an opportune time. But, you know, each time I'd say, no, I made the decision. And I was tempted through the feelings. I would think about it. And that's the thing. No, 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 I, I, I forgave. That's, that's my decision. Resist the devil. He will flee. And he does flee. And, you know, the incidences of it would get more, uh, less and less frequent. But, you know, even decades later, it would come back. Try, just, just that little weak knock, you know. Just, 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 you know no, no, I have not. And it goes away. It does go away. But you have to start with the decision. Very good. I, you know, I think uh, we just have to be careful because forgiveness and forgetting aren't the same. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and so you have to understand that I can forgive and not forget. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. I'm not at fault for not forgetting. Mm -hmm. right. What we want in the forgiveness is to understand that in this moment of decision making, I'm no longer going to take offense mm -hmm. of the act that happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to allow the pain from that moment to hold me in a place of captivity of pain or unforgiveness. So th this is the thoughts that I'll cast down. So I am going to forgive, but I may not forget. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that, that doesn't have to be bad. As mm -hmm. long as when I remember, I don't allow myself to go back to the same place of pain and offense. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I liken it to being cut. I've got a scratch here. I'll never forget it. I, I did this playing football and I just kept, every time I would make a tackle, it would just bust open. Ooh. But it's healed now. Mm -hmm. But I haven't forgot it. Mm -hmm. The scratch is still here. Mm -hmm. And at one time it was very painful. But the pain has healed. It's no longer painful. Good. But I still remember the scratch. That's good. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how we have to accept understanding that there's a difference between forgiving and forgetting. Mm -hmm. And forgetting doesn't have to be something that you've actually acquired. I, f I don't remember it anymore. It's not necessary yeah. right. to forgive someone. Right. You might remember it. Yeah. Just, yeah, don't, just, let it just good, don't let yeah. it bring the pain yeah. that it once yeah. did That's to good. you. Excellent. This is, we're gonna, can, can we Go do ahead. this? Sure. I want to take a quick break, and, and, and we realize you ladies haven't spoken on this subject yet. We're going to come back and go right to you. We'll be right back right after this. Stay with us. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, thank you for staying with us. We are back. We're continuing on this area of forgiveness versus unforgiveness. You were about to chime in as we were going to go to the break. Go right ahead. Uh, what I was going to say is when we're thinking about forgiveness, it's really recognizing that Jesus' blood is the only thing that was sufficient for forgiveness. And if I'm not willing to forgive somebody else, then I'm saying his blood was not sufficient and if I'm not willing to forgive myself, then I'm saying his blood was not sufficient for me. Yeah, and yeah. that is not true. And so yeah. being able to recognize that we're all in need of forgiveness yeah. and the only thing that can give that forgiveness is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And so if I'm not willing to forgive, then it's like slapping Jesus in the face <laughs> and I have to be willing to do that. The other thing that I, th I so agree with um, what Pastor Lyons was saying is that that it's not about forgetting. We can't forget like, like God can forget. It's, it's about releasing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I forget, what that means is I'm choosing not to bring it up and not to hold it against you again. Yeah. So if the situation comes back up, they do something again, no, that's forgiven as if it's forgotten because I've released you. I'm not bringing it back up um, that, that offense that it's forgiven. It's yeah. gone because I've forgiven. 
So. And you're you know you're right. Uh, God can forgive because I'm thinking in the Old Testament. I can't remember exactly where in a, a very nice scripture. I love it, where God told Israel, "I forgive you for my own sake." Right. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine God saying, mm -hmm. "I forgive you for my own sake," which I think tells me that. Goodness, if God doesn't want that stuff inside of him mm. because he knows how destructive it can be, sure. mm. why should I be holding on to it? But Pastor Walt, what do you have to say about forgiveness? Um, sometimes we hold on to it and are unwilling to forgive ourselves because we kind of set high expectations for ourselves. And when we don't forgive, like as stated, it's like slapping God in the face or it's like, telling God, we know better, we're placing ourselves above God. Mm. I can't forgive myself because that was too bad. But I had somebody point out to me one time that it's hard to comprehend that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Well, Jesus died on the cross for everybody's sins, and it was even way before we had committed any sins. Mm. And um, mm. the idea that it is guilt that comes on us that we don't want to forgive ourselves well that doesn't come from god that comes from the devil trying to control us and as you said keep throwing it in your face keep throwing it in your face but i also agree that not forgetting because i've been hurt by people and it was a dysfunctional situation so i had to work on forgiving them day after day after day until the thoughts kept stopped mm -hmm. coming but I'm not going to place myself in a situation because I've learned sure. a valuable boundaries. lesson. Yeah. Mm. The boundaries. And I'm also going to be on the lookout for making sure other people don't fall into the same trap that I mm. fell into yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Now, that had a part of this question, if you recall, because we, we, we've expanded on this quite a bit, but let's not let it go yet. Uh, this one viewer is saying that uh, it's a strange relationship as a parent that they have with their two oldest children not talking, have not talked with them in several, many years, they said. Mm. They want to restore the relationship now, but they don't know exactly how to go about that. Um, how do you deal with this? What, what, if you had a parishioner before you like that, what would you say to them? I, I think, you know, obviously they realize they can't do it on their own. Um, the so they're looking for a divine intervention. They're looking for God to bring something that they can't bring. And certainly, uh, if you want to bring God in your situation, I, I would suggest the first thing that they would have to do is actually ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, on their part, give forgiveness on their children's part. Um, so just let that word of forgiveness really be something that's received in their hearts and and given to their children if they've given them any ought themselves. And uh, after that, uh, the word of humility. Because you have to get humble mm -hmm. and, and simply be able to ask for that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Ask your children uh, in back in that situation. And so when pride's in a way, pride, exactly. uh, it, 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 gets hard, it gets hard for uh, God to bring the divine intervention that you desire yeah, yeah. and uh, he his word is clear that you know he resists the prideful but he exalts yeah. the humble so that that would be my advice yeah. to them simply ask for forgiveness and, and get low enough and humble enough to say God and ask your children forgive yeah. me help me and when you think of the pride thing I mean uh, sometimes a child needs to hear that parent they know the parent was wrong they need to hear the parent say that and, and like you just said it is pride mm -hmm. how do you convince a parent that you know if you were wrong You've got to fess up here. May not have been wrong. Yeah. Right? Well, That's ahead. what I was just <laughs> going to say. That's what I was just going to say. It may not be. Somebody has to be the lead. Somebody has to be the one to go first. You have to want restoration. Yes. You have to want that relationship more than you want to be right, more than you want to make your point. Exactly. You have to, it's just like what he was saying. You have to lay down your pride. You have to humble yourself and you have to go after the heart of the other person. You have to say this relationship is more important than anything and we're gonna, we're gonna work through this and we're gonna lay this aside and somebody has to be willing to go first. Yes. <laughs> very, good. So, very good, any other comments on no. that? Just that you've really gotta decide what's important. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if there's distance between them and neither party is making any attempt to communicate, 
then there is guilt on both sides mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. yeah. and so they both need to seek out, but one may only be willing, but then if it's the parent that steps first, they're ex setting the example for their children. Mm -hmm. And for me, my parents always set an example for me that I would want to follow. Mm -hmm. And if they were wrong, they would admit that they were wrong. Here's a little note to close it on. Okay. It's not, it's not who's right but what's right. Yeah. Ah. So just, just approach it with that idea. It doesn't matter who was right, mm -hmm. but what's right is that we try to restore yes. this relationship and I'm willing to do whatever it takes right. to do I it. I hope the parents Absolutely. and children, whoever's watching, will, will do yes. just that. Let's move on to another one here. Um, this viewer, are sins ranked <laughs> differently, yeah. they're asking. Are sins ranked differently? It seems that murder would be held a lot worse than a lie. So what, what, can we put different weights on different sins? Mm -hmm. Do, are some worse than others uh, as far as God is concerned? Uh, certainly we know that murder, murder takes a life, you know, mm -hmm. whereas lying does not take anybody's life, but it, it, it can still hurt. But are sins ranked? That's the question. I think that because in the earth here in this world, we do put a somebody ranking. that murders somebody yeah. else yes we mm. do place a ranking so we get caught up in what we are living in this culture this world yeah. that there is certain degrees of punishment depending upon what you do and then there are things that we can do wrong that in society we can get away with but when it comes then to the spiritual world then it's hard for us to reconcile <laughs> wait a minute it's different in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, James 2.10, mm -hmm. you know, if you fall in one point of the law, you've broken the whole law. I think, how's it go? I wrote it down. Uh, but uh, yeah, forever keeps the whole law, yet stumbles in one point, has become guilty of all. And um, certainly the Bible, I've read scriptures in the Bible that say, you know, you're guilty of a worse sin. I, and, I, and maybe even in the Old Testament, we see that, but really any sin uh, you know, if, 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 if something falls into the milk jug, a bug or something, and you, you look in the milk jug and you see that little bug <laughs> swimming in your milk, are you just going to pick up the bug and put it away and then drink the milk? No, the whole gallon has been polluted, okay? Mm -hmm. And so any sin does that. And, and so really, you know, God put that sin on Jesus. You know, we can be good and we can be evil. You know, the tree of good and evil. Right. Good was also part of the curse. You know, human goodness does not save us. That's right. It's God's All righteousness, his Savior. righteousness, which he gave us at the cross, mm -hmm. you see. And when we accept that, now we have to repent. The Bible says, you know, was it First John 1, 9, you mm -hmm. know, he is faithful. You know, if we yes. confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, unrighteousness whether it's the murder or, and I don't want to belittle murder, okay? <laughs> but uh, we don't want to um, say that, well, just a little white lie or whatever is yeah. okay. You know, all sin, mm -hmm. you see, and we're forgiven of it. And that's the beauty of the gospel, mm -hmm. that we can receive forgiveness of all sins and have His righteousness, because that's the only righteousness that is righteous. Amen. Speaking of sin, this question, some people say sickness is a sign of sin in a person's <laughs> life, that that person needs more faith to be healed. Uh, it, it almost sounds like uh, the story of Job, you know, when, when his um, compassionate friends came to, to be with him, they said, you, you know, why don't you fess up, Job? You must have sinned here. That's why you're having all this sickness and trouble. Uh, didn't do him much good at all. Uh, is sin... I mean, is sickness a sign of sin in one's life? Sounds my <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know, clearly there are things that can open doors in our right. lives, but all of sickness is a result of the fall. Um, all of the things that we face <laughs> that are were a result of the fall from Adam and Eve. And so even I think of the scripture, even where Jesus, uh, the, the disciples were wanting to know, other people were wanting to know, 
was this sickness a result of this man's sin or his parents? And he said it was neither. His blindness is not a result of either of them. And so um, I don't think it's right, even though, yes, we, we believe in faith and we believe in healing and we believe in all of those things, but um, to ascribe uh, sickness to someone as a result of their, of, of their sin, I would not say um, that that is an accurate way to describe that. Okay. okay. Right. Now, obviously, you know, it's like anything. You can, th there's things that you can do. Sure. Uh, that can contribute to, you know, your situation. All right. That could be wrong, you know. And so there's a, there's a harvest for the, the thing that mm -hmm. you've done. Uh, but I, I'm going to just leave the, the, the question asked with this, the person who asked the question. I think we do too much focusing on the, the sin and the sickness uh, and not tying the fact that the sickness being an opportunity as a believer for to show God's glory. Yes. And, and, and I think if we just kind of readdress it and don't worry about if it was sin that got me here, uh, worry about the fact that now that I'm here, how can I glorify God in it? And, and, and looking more at the opportunity than, than the fault or a blame. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of Lazarus. You, you, you know, uh, he, Jesus is like, I'm, I'm going to hold up a couple of days before I get to, because this is for the glory. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that sickness was not, it had purpose. Yes. Uh, even if you think of uh, Paul and the thorn. And, and he's praying for the thorn to be removed. Now, we don't know what that was, but at the end of the day, I can liken it to a sickness. And he says, no, my grace is sufficient, mm -hmm. you know, because my, my in this now, your, my, my glory is going to be manifested. So I, I just think that we need to focus more on, you know, is it because of sin? You know, it could be and, and a, in a particular case, and it certainly could not be. But one thing is for sure in every case is an opportunity for you to represent God's glory. Absolutely. Right. Excellent. Yeah, I, you know, it, Jesus died We're on the cross. Oh, oh, okay. Go ahead, just, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I'll give you the 30 second version here. <laughs> Jesus died that. on the cross for our sin. Okay. He also died on the cross for our sickness. Yes. And I think a lot of times people will say, Ooh, I sinned. I'm sick. Therefore, I deserve to be sick. And that could be the enemy's way of prolonging your sickness, where both were paid for on the cross. Yes. That's interesting. Amen. I've never heard that perspective, but that's, that's excellent. That's, that's very well put, very well put. Well, we're all out of time for this program, but <laughs> let me just tell our audience that this same fine panel that you're enjoying today, will be back again next week, and we'll have some other questions before then, and uh, we'll see how well they handle those as well. Thank you for being with us today. We certainly hope that uh, you've been blessed and write us. Don't forget to send in your questions so we can put those before our panel as well. So until next week, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>